Today's theme is going to be more options and better decisions. And today, I'm going to be talking about two things. One, what is the role of the medical oncologist? And two, what are the latest developments for the treatment of neuroendocrine tumors? So some days, I come to work feeling pretty good about myself. I'm making treatment decisions, referring to subspecialists, taking charge, leading the neuroendocrine tumor team, scoring touchdowns, doing good work. And some days I come to work, <laughs> and I'm kind of there to provide support. If someone needs help, if someone needs a, an order written, if someone needs an embolization order, or maybe just a second opinion to make sure that the train is going in the right direction. So the role of the medical oncologist can be quite varied. Sometimes it can be the director of the treatment team, and sometimes they can play a supportive role. And it's very interesting is that the number of providers for neuroendocrine tumor diseases is quite expansive. And a medical oncologist can lead, a surgical oncologist can lead, an endocrinologist can lead, and sometimes even a gastroenterologist. A lot of it depends on where you live, if you're in the US, some of it can be regional. Some of it can be which country you're in, which depend on who's taking the charge. And of course, there's a whole host of other subspecialties that are very important to the care provided. So the treatment modalities that can be offered and that we're oftentimes juggling are as follows. This is not an exhaustive list, but just a kind of an idea. So sometimes you can you know, recommend a curative surgery Sometimes we recommend a surgery just to reduce the tumor burden as much as possible. That can improve symptoms or sometimes provide benefit if you have a functional tumor. Liver-directed therapy is something that we often use, and there's different types. Medical oncologists will often prescribe medications. This can include the somatostatin analogs many of us take, tryptophan hydroxylase inhibitors, enzymes, chemo, targeted agents or immune therapy. And finally, nuclear medicine can provide peptide receptor radiotherapy. So what does the treatment team look like? And I've been thinking about this for several days, and I think it's important that the treatment team is not a static group. It changes. Each person, each tumor will have a different treatment team. And where you are in your disease from the beginning towards the middle, towards later on, your treatment team will change and evolve. So for example, if you have a patient with a mid-gut tumor that's metastatic and they have carcinoid syndrome, they have diarrhea, they have flushing, well, you can see our medical oncologist, you can see an endocrinologist to manage those symptoms. An interventional radiologist can do liver-directed therapy to help reduce your symptom burden. Nuclear medicine can prescribe peptide receptor radiotherapy or provide that treatment to help reduce your carcinoid syndrome. Surgery, they can remove tumors, that can also help. And again, endocrinology, medical oncology can often be, uh, you know, changed, the roles can, can be transferred. However, if you have a low-grade neuroendocrine tumor that's been removed, your treatment team will look quite different, right? You'll have the surgical oncologist, which is the most prominent, they do the surgery. They have to make sure that the tumor is not coming back. Sometimes the medical oncologist will organize your surveillance plan. The radiologist becomes very important because they have to make sure to look at your scans. And oftentimes you'll need a dietitian to make sure that you're recovering well nutritionally after your surgery. Now, what your medical oncologist will often do is decide what treatments are best for you. And there's some pieces of information that are essential to, to understanding this. They will try to determine your grade of your tumor, where the tumor is located, and whether or not your tumor has the somatostatin receptor 
based on imaging, such as Actria scan or Gallium 68. You see here, here's a kind of a complicated diagram of how that might happen and what treatment options might be available. If you have high-grade disease, it's also important to understand the site and whether or not you're well or poorly differentiated to help this determine which treatment you will get. So not all tumors are treated the same. So hopefully by the end of the day, you'll have a better understanding of all the, option, all the options available to treat your disease and that this knowledge will lead to better treatment decisions. Now for the year in review. I think the most important development over the past several years and the 2018 Nobel Prize was awarded for this discovery was the development of immuno-oncology or immuno immunotherapy for the treatment of cancer. And here Dr. Allison and Dr. Hanjo were joint recipients of this prestigious award. Over the last year, of course, we keep the, <laughs> our excellent track record going with new treatments for patients with this disease. Lutetium dodotate was approved in 2018. In 2019, important clinical trial look, looking at the combination of capcitabine and temodar was positive. And our understanding of immune therapy for this disease is developing. One study being negative for well-differentiated low-grade disease, and for high-grade disease, a study being positive. What's been really remarkable and what's changed probably all of our lives in a sense is that we are now providing peptide receptor radiotherapy in the United States. And as we speak today, there are 142 centers providing this therapy and over 3,000 patients in the U.S., which is, which is great. So let's talk about immune therapy. Immune therapy has been of great interest to neuroendocrine tumors because of its biology and the fact that there is a small group of patients that have what's called mismatch repair deficiency, which would predispose them to benefiting from this treatment. So a very important study was just completed looking at well-differentiated low-grade tumors of all different sites and giving them a checkpoint inhibitor, which is an IV immune therapy medicine. And here are the results of this study. In this, we see that only a few patients with low-grade disease were able to benefit. Here you see four patients. Overall, the study was disappointing for the neuroendocrine tumor community, and unfortunately, we probably will need to change the way we approach immune therapy for patients with low-grade disease. But the good news is, is that for patients with high-grade disease, Several studies are showing some positive results. Here is a registration trial and an FDA approval for an immune therapy in combination with chemo for patients with high-grade neuroendocrine tumors of the lung. Now, switching to standard treatments that have now shown benefit, capcitabine and temozolomide has been used for quite a while to treat pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors because we knew that patients were doing well on it, but we finally completed a randomized trial looking at both of those medications versus temozolomide alone. And our findings were quite interesting in that the benefit of the combination therapy was very good, probably a little bit better than we expected, and patients have been doing very well. So for pancreatic, and here you see this waterfall plot which shows responses, and you see lots of patients responding to these treatments. So now we have a treatment, oral pills, that we give to patients for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, and we have a lot more confidence in this treatment and how it provides and improves outcomes for our patients. Now we're trying to understand how do we implement it for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor patients, and what else do we do? So to conclude, our understanding of the role of immunotherapy has evolved. It's a great option and being developed further for high-grade and poorly differentiated tumors, and we need further research for patients with well-differentiated and low-grade tumors, either in different combinations or with different types of treatments. And also that capcitabine and temozolomide is an excellent treatment option for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and further studies are needed to determine its optimal sequence.
Thank you so much for your attention today.